Thank you everybody for joining us for our session on choosing the perfect microphone with Joseph <laughs> McGuire. Um, he's at KSVR in Washington and Mount Vernon. And um, he's a, a wonderful go-to guy for technical things. So it's always nice to have him talk with us. Um, I think that's about it for now. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and you can okay. take over, Joseph. Thank you. Well, I think I should give a bit of my bona fides. I've been working in, in radio since 1981, and uh, I've always been interested in sound, and I'm always interested in the technology and how it works. So that's pretty much, I have no engineering degree or anything like that, but, you know. <laughs> anyway, let me share the screen. Oh, it's joints. And I remember uh, from when Joseph was with us before that uh, he's he likes to engage with people. So yes. if you guys have a question, go ahead and, and just throw it out there. Please do. Thank you. Yeah. So I want to talk about the right microphone and how to use them. And so we're going to jump right in to microphone specifications or mic polar patterns and addresses. Microphones have lots of polar patterns, but these are the two basic polar patterns that we work with. And the kinds of address or how you speak into a microphone, because it's very important to speak into the right end of the microphone, otherwise you get a bad recording, but I'll talk to you about that in a second. Polar pattern means where the pickup is, where the sound is picked up the most, and where the sound is picked up the least. So the two basic polar patterns that we deal with in radio in this kind of work, studio work, outdoor work, is cardioid or heart-shaped. And as you see that from this polar pattern here, you have like the back of the microphone, which would be here or the opposite side of the condenser, is got the least pickup. And so it won't pick up sound very well. And then there's hypercardioid or supercardioid, which is uh, got a, a flat, narrow pickup pattern. So these are the, most microphones you use in the studio are cardioid. And the word cardioid means heart shape, cardioid, cardia, cardiac. <laughs> and so then microphones have two kinds of addresses. They have end address, and as you see, yes? Oh, hi, Ursula. <laughs> hi there. Hi, Joseph. Anyway, you have end address, and you have side address. Um, I call these like a ball microphone because it has a front ball. It's pretty obvious that you wouldn't speak in the end which you plug in the cable, but you would speak into the end that has the little round ball. Um, and the side address is a little bit more trickier because the microphones that are side address uh, condensers mostly have two sides. As you can see from my microphone, I'm speaking into one side. And when you're, so the pattern is the back is less, the front is more. Where you can go wrong with a side address is which side you're speaking into. And generally, there's a front indicator. It can be the name of the microphone. It can be a symbol, a dot. It can even look like a cardioid pattern like this. If you talk into the wrong side or address side of the microphone, you will sound like this. You will sound muffled. You will sound <sighs> off. And so you have to be careful when you're listening to yourself you'll know but if you're listening to someone else you sort of have to listen to how they sound and so any questions on this okay moving along so i'm going to get a little technical here how many people know about the technical aspects of mike okay so you know there's a condenser mic and a dynamic mic. And a condenser mic uses um, a powered microphone to create the sound 
that goes down the cable to the cable, but it has a little pre-amplifier inside the microphone. And that's why you need a power source. And we'll talk about where the power source comes from in a minute. A dynamic microphone is one that has a little diaphragm that pushes a a uh, circle or a, co a coil of copper wire past a cylinder magnet and it causes current flow. And that's as technical as I'm going to get, unless anyone wants me to get more technical. <laughs> so um, what we, the differences between the two is what we'll come to is called sensitivity. Any questions? Okay, moving along. Well, where do you get this power that powers the condenser microphones? Will you get them from an audio mixer board or a USB interface? And it's called phantom power. And you'll see this is the connectors that we generally use called XLR. And I learned that in 1915, these cables were developed and they were called X cables. And then in 1950s, they added the L. And then in the 60s, they added the R. It actually or doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's just a designation. Anyway, so the audio mixer board sends 24 to 48 volts down the same cable wire that you send the signal back to the audio mixer board or the USB interface. So it powers the mic and allows it to have a signal that's high enough that you can amplify it. And so on audio mixer boards, it's called a preamp gain. On a USB interface, it's just called a mic gain. Any questions? OK. So I'm going to talk what's the goods and and bad about the condenser microphones. Well, they're highly sensitive to background sound. They need phantom power for the most part. They are very good for studios, studios that have a lot of sound dampening reverberation and such. They can be not rugged for outside work. If you bounce them, they can break easier. And they have something called a flat frequency response, meaning it picks up the frequency of your voice across the entire spectrum much better. The dynamic mics, rugged for outside work because you can bang them and there's not there, they're just a, a, a lot of metal and coils. And so they're very rugged. Good for hand holding, specifically ones designed for hand holding, so that you can do interviews, you know, like you've always seen people do back and forth type work. No phantom power needed because they supply their own signal. Uh, not very sensitive. They don't pick up uh, sound uh, a lot. They're good for in-studio or outside. And they have something that the other condensers have too, but they're very effective for this. It's called the microphone effect. The closer you get to a microphone, the deeper it picks up more of your deep end of your voice. The further away you back, if you stay within the good range, the less it picks up, the deeper in your voice. So it's what some people call the DJ voice, along with how you use the DJ voice. Any questions on those two subjects? All right. There's a condenser shotgun mic. This is uh, a microphone that has that hypercardioid. It has that flat flame-like pickup pattern, mostly because it has extreme rejection of side sound. And this is used like in um, for uh, news reporters, electronic news gathering and such. Their electric design, which again, I won't go into too much te technical detail, but all you need is a battery to use them. So you don't have to have a device that gives them phantom power. And they're used in a blimp which helps cut down extraneous noise and a muff that helps cut down wind noise because the shotgun mic is sort of buried deeply in the blimp. 
So it wind hits and other noise is reduced. So getting a good recording. This is going very fast, gang. <laughs> this is a circle because all these points are needed for a good recording. You need a good room. You need to choose a, a good mic. You need to, how to know how to use your mic. You need to know about sensitivity and how much gain you need. You need to use headphones. So we'll start with going over each one. The room. There's Mr. Microphone. He's clapping his hands. It's causing it to reverberate off flat walls, which creates, in depending on the room size, anyway from just sound reflections reflecting back into the microphone or a full echo. So in how do you deal with this? Well, there, I like to think if you're uh, in a home operation or in a, a room without any blankets can be very good or curtains. Um, foam is a good thing. Acoustic foam is expensive. So I sometimes think it's just good to go down and buy one of those thing, bed topper foams. But it's your choice. A dynamic mic, because it doesn't pick up the surrounding um, sounds as much, and you can make it go with close miking. So you can turn the sensitivity gain down a little bit and mic closer, and it doesn't pick up as much of the room. Any questions? Sensitivity, how much gain do you uh, need? Uh, there's a, there. there is a room, there's an answer, go ahead. Um, so when deciding where to put the phone, can you give some sort of priority? Is, is it, um, are the corners the most important? Or, you know, if you have to choose where to put foam, because obviously with some rooms, you can't do the whole room. That's true. What's the, what's the priority? Are, are corners more important than the flat walls? Um, actually, I think not. Because if you, have some, if you have something on the walls, then it won't reflect to the other wall where the corners. So I think the priority is actually in front of you. In front of you, but yes. isn't that isn't that's, that the wall the white mic is not facing? That's true, but I'm talking about room reverberations, and you take and you talk in front of you, and you know using screens can be have some problems too. But if you're talking directly in front, it's going to bounce off the front and go backwards because that's the way your voice mm -hmm. is projecting. Interesting. And I've actually, when I was uh, doing working from home, I took a two by four lifetime plastic table and I put legs and I made a framework. And then I just put foam on the top, on the sides and in the front. So I think that where you're speaking is important so that to the sides and in front of you are the priority areas. Mm. In the back of you, um, it's, it, if you can't have uh, a lot of blankets or a lot of sound reduction foam, I think those that's my personal opinion. If you wanted to get a, a professional opinion, you'd have to talk to an acoustic person who would say, well, no, you just need these little panels in these particular areas, and that will break up the room reverberations. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about just sort of setting up a room. You know, uh, in in where I, in my room where I do it, I have a lot of books. Books break up sound too. Bookshelves with books on them, I think, work very well. Anything to break up that re that reflection that goes back into the microphone. Okay, thank you. That was interesting. Did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. You did. Okay. All righty. Yeah, we're, we're kind of setting up a little recording room. And so, you know, it helps me think about that. Yes, indeed. So one other aspect I want to say, uh, sometimes people get too happy with foam and blankets <laughs> and it can give a room a dead sound. Now, 
you can add back re, uh, room tone and make it less dead. So it's good to experiment and make recordings and see how it sounds. And if it gets you that live sound without the room of reflections, that's probably the best way to do it. So back to sensitivity and how much gain do you need? So if, you know, if you've ever seen an ordinary mixer board like here, you see that it has something called, sometimes it's called trim pots, sometimes it's called pre-gains, preamp games. And what they are is this is the uh, microphone preamp be, that's before the fader. Uh, the fader being the, the, that you do your, your, your micro adjustment of sound. And then you have on your USB interface, you have what's just called a mic gain. And these have a sensitivity rating of somewhere between 57, 55, and 60 decibels of amplification. And if you know anything about decibels, that's a huge amount of amplification you're adding to the mix. And so dynamic mics have a sensitivity rating in decibels. And most dynamic mics have a sensitivity of 55 to 60, which means you have to raise the preamp or mic gain almost all the way up. So a lot of people don't understand that. So when they plug in a, a dynamic mic, they, they go, why am I have to turning this so high? Because there's a sensitivity problem you need to bring it up. Condenser microphones, generally 35 to 45 gain of dBs. And this is where you can pick up, where if you have it too far up, you can start picking up a lot of sound. And then each other device, the recording device has a mic gain, and most recording handheld recording devices uses a condenser microphone. And a condenser microphone, uh, a lot of USB, built-in USB microphones are condensers. I personally like Dynamics. I think they work better. Um, and so you have the microphone gain on that. So that's why they have microphone gains and you have microphone gains on handheld recorders because most of those are condenser microphones. Any other questions? Uh, Joseph, would you a question? Yes. Oh. Um, gain is not the same as loudness, correct? Yes, it is. It is the same. Yes. So, so Joseph, the question I was going to ask you is the definition of gain, how much power is being given to the mic to affect the volume? Is that, I mean, the gain is the, the amount of, of power being um, used? Used to correct? amplify the microphone. Yeah, so it's the amount of power for, for amplifying the volume or the, the sound, the, how loud yes. the microphone is. How okay. loud the microphone is. So yes, gain and loudness. It's just, we call it gain because that's sort of what uh, is the technical term for when you're you're dealing with loudness. So it's so, kind of like the horsepower to make the loudness. It's the, <laughs> yes, it's just another way of saying loudness. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the horsepower is the electrical amplifiers that you're cranking up. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Using your microphone. This is where a lot of people get in trouble because they don't know that the closer you are to your microphone, the better you are. Sometimes you can get too close. And usually what happens, cause the, the problem happens with that is things like plosives and such. Um, but for distance, Depending on your room, depending on your gain, depending on your microphone, one to three inches. Or I like to tell people, three fingers. Three fingers from your microphone. I'm trying to get, there we go. Three fingers from your microphone front bias. And that's what I say when, I'm, when I tell people in, in Radio Theater Project, or I say, Get the three mic three fingers to your microphone. And then I listen to them and go, well, maybe not quite so close. <laughs> if you are too distant, three mitches or more, you will start sounding like you are distant. And then you will be, and then 
people had this tendency to turn up the gain, specifically on condensers. And now all of a sudden they sound louder, but there's more room being picked up. So it's good to find your where you're supposed to be. And for a condenser microphone, keeping the gain minimal gain amplification as possible. And I have a kind of uh, way I have done this is if you start with the gain all the way down and you listen to your headphone and you start counting one, two, and just start turning it up until you hear the right sound. So those are important. That's why she's wearing headphones is because you should be wearing headphones. Any other questions? Any questions? Now, choosing a micro, yes. So the, the, the pee popping, do you, do you angle the microphone slightly away from the mouth yes. to prevent the popping? Yes. Uh, 45 degrees is perfectly fine. Or with a condenser microphone, you can kind of talk a little bit over it. You can also use pop filters. Um, I'm not a big fan of pop filters. They work well when you're doing sort of talk radio that's extemporaneous. But when you're trying to read stuff, it kind of gets in your way. <laughs> but I did find this particular kind of pop filter for uh, condenser uh, horizontal mics kind of neat. They just sort of fit on like that. That answer my que your question? Okay. So choosing the mic. In this world, cost is the most important specification. Um, part of that goes with brand names, like Audio-Technica, like Rode, like um, uh, Shure. Those are microphones you can trust. If you go to Amazon and you type in USB mic, you'll get Chinese things like toner and new ear. And, and nowadays they have letters of strings of, of X's and O's because they don't want to deal with uh, trademark violations. You don't want those. I'm going to make a specific, I don't know if you want me to, and you can edit this out if you wish, but I do not like Yetis by Blue or Blue Yetis. I think they're terrible microphones for the, even though they cost a lot of money, $130, $140. Mm, how come? Because I think they're they're cheaply made and they have a horrible form factor. It looks like you should talk in front of them. They look like a side address microphone, but they're actually an end address microphone. <laughs> and people turn them up and they don't know how to use them. And they have weird connectors for connecting to uh, arms and such. <laughs> I just don't like it. <laughs> and how it's going to be used. Like I said, there's, you know, uh, uh, outside microphones, shotgun microphones, internal microphones, you know, DJs in studios for music with the, the standard is the Shure M SM7. And, you know, they're $400 a piece, but they really are nice and they're rugged and they'll take a beating. So how is it going to be used? Is it just going to be used in your own personal recording studio? Then you can, you know, you can choose one that's a little more, a little less rugged. So I'm thinking that maybe anybody have any questions about this kind of choosing a microphone? Because uh, it's hard to cover in general. Joseph, I'm yes. at KTWH with Fran. Yes. Jane here. Um, just this might be redundant, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, in the past, we would re refer to these as omnidirectional mics. Is that a term that's used anymore? I'm, I didn't see you, that you. I didn't mention mic. omnidirectional mics because okay. most people don't use omni. Most microphones okay. are not omnidirectional. Okay. Um, that's one polar pattern. See, there's. Uh, okay. That's, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a little brief. There's there's like two other polar patterns. There's besides the cardioid and hypercardioid. There's also uh, omnidirectional and figure eight or bidirectional, where one person stands on one side, another person stands on the other side or sits, and they're using one microphone and they it can pick up equally. 
And um, there's like four or more different kinds of polar patterns. And some microphones have selectable polar patterns. But the majority of the microphones are cardioid these days. Thank you. I will say one thing. Um, the microphones, and I didn't talk about these because I don't know why I didn't. But anyway, the microphones, the lapel microphones, they tend to be omnidirectional. Okay. Um, Joseph, do you have any other brands that you uh, think are worth looking into? Well, Audio Technica, did I mention Audio Technica? Um, um, not Newman, Newman. Um, oh gosh, there's there's some, a lot of good microphone companies out there. Those are just sort of the basic ones that everybody knows about. Rode's a big one. Um, Mackie, this is a Mackie microphone. Um, Blue does make good microphones, just not the Yeti. <laughs> I'm using a Theron Max. A Ther I've never heard of that one. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It has uh, four different settings on here. Right now, I'm using the omnidirectional setting on it. Mm-hmm. And um, I, haven't, I haven't had any problems is, with it. I can't see it because of your background, but is it a side address or front address? Uh, side right now. It's set on okay. side. So why do you have it on omnidirectional? Because I move around a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if you looked at the polar pattern, I don't think you move behind your microphone. No. <laughs> I'm just curious because, you know, you can set it to whatever direction uh, polar pattern you wish. But... Omnidirectional means it might pick up some background noise that you wouldn't pick up if you had a, if it was cardioid. Now, if I well, there uh, like I said, there's uh, there are three other settings on here, mm -hmm. and sometimes if I change the setting on it, it will pick up my. Uh, I have a an air filter running, and it will pick it up. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you can hear it right now. No, I don't hear it. And th yeah, so and is the is the is the one setting hypercardioid? Or a flame-like pattern? Uh, no. Oh, I don't. I, I'd, I'd have to. I'd have to look up the microphone to see. Yeah. I mean, it's a great microphone. I, well, no. I don't. Know how, I, don't, I, don't how, I don't know how I found it, but I did. And I'm very happy with it. I went through. Oh goodness, four different mics, and like you were talking about, the mics that were on uh, Amazon. Yes. I went there first, and they were garbage <laughs> <laughs> generally and how um, do you spell it it is spelled t-h-r-o-n-m-a-x that's what i thought oh you can see it a little bit now when you hold it so it's eric what's it called again a theron theron max so you have it like I don't know what the word is. It's coming from above. Yes. There's a couple of them there. And, uh... hmm. Does it matter if um, it's like a standing mic or if it's does, uh, does it matter? Oh, you mean if it's upside down or right side up? Yeah. Uh, no. Um, with it, with it uh, right, with it upside down, like with an arm pointing downwards, you can kind of adjust it so that, you know, sometimes you can adjust it so you don't hit the capsule directly with your plosives, or you can turn it a little bit sideways or something like that. Mm -hmm. If it's like down here, like on, on like this, Mm -hmm. then you sort of have to do that yourself. <laughs> I see. And, you know, they have some stands have adjustments that goes up and down. So um, it, it's just a matter of preference. And also this way I can see the screen better than if it was uh, side, uh, upside down, pointing down. But I will tell you my preference is not this kind of microphone. My preference is for a, is an end address microphone. Because specifically when you use an arm with it, it's much more easier to manipulate and make sure that you can see things. 
and it's easier to under to do the sideways or the 45 degree angle and that and i that's why i tend to like end address microphones at home i use a rode pod mic which is a pretty good price for a very good mic i would say at best a hundred dollars at least for a microphone Okay. Any other questions? How much was yours, Eric? Can we ask? Goodness. I don't remember what I paid for this, but it was, I think it was in the range of $150. Well, there you go. <laughs> Cost will tell you everything. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, can you, can you um, for, for somebody starting out, can you give some sort of checklist of what to ask or what to look for when you know looking at a mic deciding whether it's um something that uh you know whether it's good or not um like, what are you looking for uh i'm looking for a reputable brand and I hate to keep saying brand because, you know, it's just, it just is a company that, and it, it, and the kind of uh, room that you're planning on being in and um, whether you're going to be using it with a USB interface or you're going to use it with a mixer board. Um My personal opinion is I think dynamic mics are the best of the whole bunch. I'm not a big fan of condenser mics when you're dealing with uh, rooms like home rooms and stuff like that, because there there's too much room for error. And I can only say that the best starter mic for a USB mic is the Audio Technica 2005. Audio Technica makes good microphones. And it's not too expensive for a kit. $129 gives you an arm, a microphone, headphones. I think that's a good starter microphone. And then later you can you can look to see if you want to. It, 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 it just um that's I it, it's hard to say <laughs> exactly. Joseph, I'm Jane here back in Two yes. Harbors. Um so some of the recording I'm doing is off site, like in windy or like there could be dogs yapping and, yes. you know, a lot of uh, field recording and um, it's, it's tricky. And it is. what are you talking um, dynamic mic there or using it? And we use a muff, um, but what, or is that, can you tell me the combo that you would. Well, in the cases, generally it is a condenser microphone. Like I showed mm -hmm. the shotgun microphone yep. there, there is, uh, there's not many, there's, it's a rare thing to have a dynamic shotgun because okay. you kind of need that amplification, that, that gain. And the blimp and the muff are absolutely, you're, uh, you, you're not going to worry, you're not going to be able to, to get rid of uh, sound, background sound like dogs barking very much. And we want that actually too. <laughs> yes, you want that. Depending, yeah. you know, you want that NPR idea of where you are. That's great. But it's the muff that's cuts out the wind noise because it hits it and breaks up the wind noise to a degree, a general degree. And the best way, if you're, if you're like interviewing a person or you want to, and since it's radio, you don't have to worry about a picture screen, get the microphone as close as possible to the person, you know, uh, four inches above their nose just as long as it's out of their eyesight. And then you can adjust the gain just to hear. And there's a sweet spot when you know it sounds good. And I guess that's one of the things I should say is that you have to list, learn how to listen to what you're doing so you can find that sweet spot, learning what is background noise and what is not. A lot of people, I've, I've dealt with people who have good microphones, but they don't know how to use microphones well. And they think it sounds good when it's not sounding good. Thank you. Indeed. 
I hope I helped. Yes. I see Kevin wrote in the chat, um, hail PR 40, Mike, Sennheiser 40, 40, 441 or oh, Sennheiser, another good company. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You said that, that the, uh, they've been used by pro DJs. Uh, we use electro voice RE 20 around. Oh, those are another standard, uh, uh, board mic. And they all cost about three, four hundred dollars. Is that a condenser mic then? Uh, no, that's an actually a dynamic. That's a dynamic. The RA twenty is a dynamic. Chill. So we move on. Headphones. Uh, we've talked about this before. This is how you know that you sound good on a microphone. How you hit that sweet spot. If you're not wearing microphones or headphones, then you are you have no idea what you sound like. <laughs> After a while, if you've done this enough, you know that you can get closer or further back and you know how you get. But headphones gives you really tells you how to dial in the sound. That includes with the 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 blimp. You'll know it when you hear the headphones, when you'll know the sweet spot when you go, oh, three or four inches from this person. And there's one other aspect of microphones that is important to understand is how well a person projects. I've had many Skagit Talks interviews. Everything was fine, but they talk like this. And now I have to turn up the uh, mic gain. And now if I'm turning up the mic gain, they are getting more background noise. In a room... With lots of sound dampening, it's not as important. But if you're outside or in a, a bad room, it'll really ruin your recording because they're just not projecting into their microphone. Because <laughs> they normally speak like this. Not that that's anything against them, but that's how they speak. So, yes, wearing headphones. Again, um, I'm not as much cost conscious to headphones as I am with microphones. You kind of find the, the headphone that fits your ears. And I've had like uh, microphones that are like $25 Sony microphones, but Sony's a good company that have been good. That um, um, I don't think that a four, $400 makes a better microphone. I will, one thing, one thing I will say is don't get microphones that um, get rid of background sound. But do you mean microphones or headphones? I mean headphones. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Don't get rid of sound noise canceling headphones because that gives you a false sense of what the room is. And it also tends to change the sound. And of course, over the ears are hugely better than earbuds. But if it's all you got is earbuds, it's better than nothing. Any questions? So I'm supposed to talk about remote recordings and how to make it better with guests. And this is using, this is what I use. And I'm still using it, even though I'm back in the studio, because some people don't want to leave. And um, one of the things I did was all the people who are interviewers all got good mics, Audio-Technica 2005s. The guest may sound okay, just okay, but the interviewer is going to sound great. <laughs> it's sort of balances out the badness of the guest if there's if it is bad so iris zencaster riverside clean feed squadcast etc these are all web real-time communication services and so what you should do with your guests is you ask them at best is to wear headphones or earbuds and if they have a usb mic or a usb interface with a mic that's even better and of course, my opinion, dynamic mics are better than condenser mics, but a good mic, a dynamic mic is, is, is good, specifically in untreated rooms. They just work much better. And um, that's what ca uh, causes loopback or echo is the, they're playing their speakers and they're using their open mic and it's going back and forth. And so that's why it's called loop back because it's looping back into the, and it sounds like an echo. If you have headphones or earbuds, 
then you get rid of that loopback problem. A lot of these, all of these have little buttons that turn on anti-echo canceling. And those are good if that's all you've got. But what happens is it starts ducking um, the voice specifically on the, the interviewer's voice because we're dealing with multi-tracks. So it can sound in its own way kind of odd as this, it sort of dims it down, trying to control the echo, trying to cancel it. So kind of always ask your guest if they don't have a good microphone to oh, or eat, whatever, you should always ask them to have earbuds or headphones of some sort. I don't really, I haven't had good much luck, luck with Bluetooth headphones. It tends to cause interference somehow. I'm not sure why. So any questions on this? So I am done. I'll take general questions for the next 10 or so um, minutes. That's right. You're going to stay. Yes. Um, uh, Joseph had helped uh, Ursula and I out this week with a, we had a clean feed interview that we did and it had some static to it and he ran it through a podcast website which was called podcast was adobe or podcast.adobe.com slash enhance it that was very helpful it was it i mean i i, I could probably spend hours to get something close but you know they have the power <laughs> and at the moment it's free so you know <laughs> one day yeah. it won't be <laughs> i'm sure of it <laughs> but i remember you mentioned what 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 is it again joseph <laughs> uh podcast.adobe.com slash enhance and you have to sign up for it but it's still free um, and, and do, you have, do you have to do any adjustments or does it you just tell it to fix it and it fixes well it, it? what it basically does is it fixes any reverberation or echo in the and gives and, and does equalization so that it so you can us, also get rid of an echo that's what it's basically it's it says in the in in its the two things it does is it makes it does an equalization and it does uh, it removes reverberation but it also got rid of the it got rid of scratching it did i i heard some yeah but it did a pretty good job it did it did <laughs> mm-hmm. and again you know i have isotope rx and um if I spent a lot of time with it, I probably could have gotten close, but they have, they have the, I hate to use the word AI. It's becoming such a loaded word, <laughs> but they got the tools, the, the machine language tools to do a better job than I could. Mm -hmm. So you just put it in there and you, you chose like what they do. It's all automatic. It, I, I chose nothing. Oh. You just say go and it just, it just says go. Okay. It says it says 10 minutes. Well, it may take 10 minutes. Hmm. That's really That's nice. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. That's why I was and I did some work on it. And those uh, crackles are really hard to get rid of on, on, on my level because I think you'd have to surgically remove them. I'd have to go into and surgically remove the sound. So that would take hours. Was it your impression that those crackles were clean feet or had something to do with his microphone? It has to do with the internet. Uh -huh. Your internet wasn't, was having some problems. Okay. Uh, oh, that's why you're saying multi-track. That's why I'm not a big fan. Of, who's got loop back? Someone's got loop back. Uh, anyway, what is it? that's Ursula's microphone. Oh. Anyway, oh, um, I'm muting you. <laughs> and so, um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, the oh, multi track. Versus, oh, yes, yeah, um. That's why I don't use clean feed for interviews. I use it for radio theater project or for doing audio dramas 
because uh, it's what I it there's there's two different the most of the web RTCs like Iris, Squadcast, Zencast, they're um, guest recorded. They're recorded on the computer, and when and be, and when you hit the stop button, it's loaded up onto their cloud or onto Dropbox or however the particular web RTC service uh, does it. Like Iris and Squadcast have their own cloud. Zencaster expects you to have a Dropbox account. And so uh, it's as good as the microphone they have. So there's no problem with the internet, no reflections, noise, crackling, stuff like that. Um, and it also could have been his microphone, but I, I'd have to, you know, his computer could have been. And if it was his computer and microphone, it wouldn't have mattered then whether he used Iris or it would have showed up anyway. But my guess is there was the the internet. And so um, so that's why I, for interviews, for Skagit Talks, I use Iris. For Radio Theater Project, because we're reading dialogue at the end of every scene, I say, well, let's read 595. It had a boing in it. <laughs> and then I put it at the end. And then when I go clean it up, I move it. And, you know, sometimes it's just a word that needs it. So I take a word and just copy it and paste it over the old word. <laughs> And so um, that's, but that's, and there's other reasons, which I'll get to if we do a webinar about uh, multi-tracking is you can get rid of someone's inappropriate chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, 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 uh, my, my bird died. <laughs> you know, I really meant it. My bird died. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you can get rid of his inappropriate chuckle. <laughs> Yeah, right on. That and that does. It seems like yeah, using that it would just help you minimize the things that could go wrong. And I'm going to tell you that in the studio, at least our studio now, we're using multi-tracking: one microphone, one track. Because I wasn't going to go back to monotrack uh, editing, <laughs> and what that helps with is microphone crosstalk. So if I'm talking to someone who's on the other side and their microphone is picking up me at a distance. And so it sounds like a it's out of phase or kind of like a little bit of an echo in the background. And I can cut that out on their side, the blank side, and that disappears. That's if you have multi-tracking, which I've gotten some really bad sound without with mono tracking because <laughs> of that. Yeah, but anything else about and microphones? I have things to explore more on that. And, you know, anytime you want to have a personal discussion, we, we can. Awesome. Um, Joseph, the, uh, so the podcast Adobe Enhance thing, can we take uh, an MP3 that's been produced just in the studio and run it through that? Yeah, it's Waves or MP3s, it says. Huh? Okay, great. Yeah. And... Um, the Audio Technica 2005, that's a USB mic? It's a USB, but it's a hybrid. It's also an XLR. So like if you get a good interface oh. or you want to plug it into a board, that's one of the re another reason I like that microphone. You can just use it as a, a cabled microphone that goes to your board. Mm -hmm. So that seems like I, I was hoping to get a good one to recommend to people who want to produce a program at home. They're not yeah. going to have a soundboard, just a computer. Right. Like, I, that's, what, that's what I... That's what I gave to all of our actors when, when the pandemic started. Oh, ah, perfect. Great. Thanks. So a, as a final thing, unless anyone else has any more questions, I wanted to show you a little gizmo that I just purchased. Cool. What's that? This is a portable fandom power that can power a condenser mic using lithium batteries, rechargeable. Oh. So you plug mic, uh, the, the mic in one end and you plug the cable in the other and that goes and you don't have to have phantom power for uh uh a microphone recorder that has an xlr jack in it so you don't have to chew chew up batteries <laughs> mm, that's handy yes it was only that's 50 for bucks. like in studio right like no, no no this is for uh external recording for it is for external yeah even though you said that uh condensers aren't as good well, shotgun mics, field. shotgun mics. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, someone said they just bought one too. Uh, Kevin. 
oh, <laughs> I just got it the other day. So, and I and I tried it out. I have a very old Marantz recorder that was made, I think, in the late '90s. But I loved the form factor. Was what Marantz replaced their their uh, 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 tape recorder with. But boy, if you turn on Phantom Power, you just you, you kill batteries in an hour. <laughs> Well, that's going to be a, a dream come true. Sorry, go ahead, Eric. I have a question. Yes. Um, I went out and bought a a road a Roadcaster Pro Two. What do you think about that? What's your opinion? All road microphones are good, but this is this is more than a microphone. Oh, you mean the board? Yeah, <laughs> I've never used it, but I understand it's 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 uh, very usable. And it's a road, so I think it's a fine piece of equipment. I'm trying to feel my way through it. I've been playing around with the, uh, uh, you know, the sound effects and then changing your voice and and recording something, you know. And right now I'm trying to get it uh, uh, into my computer. I mean, it's easier for the Mac, but for the PC, it's kind of kind of difficult. But I'm trying to figure that out now. Um. Yes, you're talking about drivers. Yeah. Go to the road website and find out which of the three drivers you which one of the three drivers you need to set up. Okay. Um, because it could there, there's three different drivers. I have a Macintosh myself. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean I can I can put this on my Mac, but I'm you know, right now I'm on my PC and I'm more comfortable with my PC right no, now. No, I understand. No, you and have to find out which driver they use. Yeah. And and maybe they have a driver you have to download. Okay. I suggest anybody reading the manual is a good thing. Men don't read manuals. Come on. Man. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I also read maps. I love maps. <laughs> so, so do I. Thank you. Well, speaking of uh, maps, Eric, you should give us a report, uh, a helicopter report of the city right now, since you're there. The helicopter report? Well, yeah. you have Chopper 2 on your background screen. Oh, yeah. It's well, CBS I know, Channel yeah, 2. CBS 2 New York. I know I know the reporter. And like every day, you know, they, they stream on Facebook and and we would talk back and forth and stuff like that. I've known the guy for years. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Well, I'm just about ready to leave. Okay. And any quick questions? Did everybody get any information out of this that, that they yeah, found useful? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Thank you, Joseph. It's great. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I always, it's, it's a lot of dense information, but I always feel like whenever you talk, it, it gets a little more clear for me. So I'm always grateful for it. Um, yeah, thanks, so, yeah. Joseph. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You bet. Thank you so much for talking with us today. This has been great. Well, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got some other ideas in the works, so we'll be talking. And um, thank you, everyone, for coming. It always makes it uh, a wonderful, more wonderful time when we can engage and have questions. So we appreciate everyone who could make it today. So with that, um, have out. a great day, and we'll see you later. Okay. <laughs>